All right, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to Structure Free Learning. And in this video, we return to reinforced concrete design or analysis. And in this video, I'm going to do an example problem showing you how I like to analyze reinforced concrete beams that are doubly reinforced, meaning there's steel on the tension side and the compression side. And in this problem, I'm given a concrete ultimate compressive strength of 4 KSI, grade 60 steel, modulus of elasticity and the strain at yield are shown there as well and what we want to find is the design moment strength which you might be familiar as phi times mn or the phi times the nominal moment strength of this reinforced concrete section here and I have two number 8 bars as my compression steel and then four number 11 bars acting as my tension steel now the approach that I like to take when I do an analysis of a reinforced concrete beam is first to always draw the strain and stress profiles. And I think this is an important step because it lets me visualize the equations that I'm looking for and really reminds me all the time that the strains that the section is experiencing is really what governs the design moment strengths. Yeah, in my reinforced concrete structures. The next thing we need to do is find where the neutral axis depth is, which I like to call CNA, and that is going to require using equilibrium. And in particular, that means equilibrium with some of the forces in the horizontal or in the axial direction. This is probably one of the more important steps in any beam analysis. And when you have a doubly reinforced beam, it's going to take us to solve this, making some assumptions on the strains in the steel, and then applying equilibrium, calculating the neutral axis depth, and then verifying the assumptions that we used. And you'll see in this problem that this is kind of an iterative process, but you know, really something that you only have to do once or twice. And once you have the neutral axis depth, then you're good to go. And, and what we can do is apply essentially moment equilibrium to calculate the nominal moment. And then last but not least, it, you can calculate strains, which it kind of is integrated in through the process, but here you can determine the design moment strength, phi mn, which requires that you determine the strength reduction factor, phi. And that's going to depend on the strain in the steel. And I'm doing all my calculations in accordance with the ACI 318 building code. Now that we've got a sense of how to do this problem, let's go ahead and do it. So the first thing that we want to do is draw the strain and stress profile. And what I like to do is draw horizontal lines across, get your straight edge, because that's the way it should be done. And my first profile, my first line, vertical line, represents what's going to be my strain profile. Next one represents my stress or force, stress slash force profile. And the strain profile is always linear. And so I'm just going to go ahead and draw a line here. Bam. The top represents compression. The bottom represents tension. And I'm going to assume, or really the basis for the design moment strength is that ultimate, which is defined as when the concrete and compression crushes. So that means the extreme compression fiber here, this epsilon C, the strain and compression reaches the ultimate which is 0.003 as defined by the ACI code. I don't know what my other strain values are, but my strain values that are going to be important to me are the strain of the steel in compression, I'll call that epsilon S prime, and my strain in tension, I'll call that epsilon S. And the distance to the zero strain is my neutral axis depth, which I will call here CNA. Then I'm going to draw my stress and force profile. And I, again, I'm going to use the Whitney stress block here. And so I'm going to have my compression or my stress block. And this has a depth A, has a width or stress associated of 85% or 0.85 of the ultimate strength of concrete. So 0.85 FC prime. And I am going to say that my steel here experiences some stress FS. And there would be an FS prime associated with that. But I'm going to convert that to a force. So here, uh, let's see, for the tensile steel, I'll just call this 
I'll draw a little squiggly line for the resultant of the tensile, str uh, tensile force due to the tensile reinforcement. So here is my, I'll call that TS. I'm going to call the force resultant in the compression steel, I'll call that CS prime. And then the resultant of the compression force in concrete, or the resultant of the Whitney stress block, or the equivalent stress block, is C sub C. And I'm assuming right now that this distance right here, that the compression resultant in the steel is higher or located above the compression force resultant in the Whitney stress block. So this distance right here is D prime. And this distance right here is what we would call Y bar, or the centroid of the compression force resultant. This distance is D minus Y bar. In this problem, D would be 25 inches. So this here represents D, and this represents D prime, the 2.5 inches. So the next thing we want to do is determine CNA from force equilibrium. And so generically, force equilibrium would be some of the forces equal to zero. So maybe we say to the right is positive. So here, when I look at this section here, there's at forces going horizontally. And that would be, my equation would be TS minus CS prime minus CC equals zero. But in order for me to determine what these forces are, especially in the steel layer, I have to have an understanding of what's going on with the steel strains. And so that's going to that's gonna be where our assumptions come in. And so our first set of assumptions that we're going to make. One, we're going to assume that the compression steel yields. And when we assume that, that means that we think epsilon s prime is greater than or equal to the yield strain of steel, which further implies that the stress in the steel, fs prime, is equal to fy, or the yield strength of steel. The next assumption is that we're going to assume that the tensile steel yields. And again, this means that the tensile steel strain we're assuming is greater than the yield strain, which implies that Fs is equal to Fy. Now, I'm going to a lot of detail in this example problem, but the reason we say Fs prime or Fs or the strength in steel is equal to Fy is because we're using what's called an elastic, perfectly plastic model of the of the stress strain curve for steel. And what we're saying here, if this is strain and this is stress of steel, what we're saying is that it's linear up to the yield strain of steel. And after yielding, it's equal to one value all the way across, and that is Fy. And within this region here, the stress in the strain obeys Hooke's law or in the linear elastic region. All right, so this is our model for the, for the stress strain curve that we're applying when we do beam analysis. And this is conservative. So now with these assumptions in place, we can go ahead and populate our equilibrium equation. So here, the tensile steel has yielded. So the force in the tensile steel is just straight up ASFY. The compression steel has yielded. So this would be AS prime, FS prime, and then minus the compression force resultant of the Whitney or the equivalent stress block, which is 0.85 FC prime times the width of the beam times the depth of the equivalent stress block equal to zero. And a couple things here. We had in this problem four number 11 bars, which is four times 1.56 inches squared. That is just 6.24 inches squared for the area of tensile steel. And the compression steel, we had two number eight bars, which is two times 0.79 inches squared. And that is 1.58 inches squared. Oh, whoa, I almost messed up here. Check this out. This Fs prime, because we assume that the steel has yielded, this is also just Fy. And if you recall from the definition of the Whitney stress block, A is equal to beta 1 times CNA, where CNA was, or where beta 1 was a modifier depending on the ultimate compressive strength of concrete. And for 4 KSI concrete, beta 1 is equal to 0.85. Now we could go ahead and plug and chug and solve for CNA. And when I solve for CNA, I will get that the depth to the neutral axis is 6.91 inches. Now I need to verify my assumptions in order for me to proceed. So I've got to verify that the, steels act, the steel layers or steel reinforcement actually did yield. And so 
Within all of this determining CNA, the next part of it is verifying assumptions. And that means checking the strains in the steel. So what we're going to do is here is calculate based on CNA equal to 6.91 inches. We're going to calculate the strain in the compression steel and the strain in the tension steel. And if you recall, you can use similar triangles to determine these strains. And all you we're doing is relating this large triangle here with this known strain and known CNA to all these other locations. First, let's go ahead and check the compression steel strains. And that would be epsilon S prime over CNA minus D prime is equal to epsilon CU over CNA. So this is that similar triangle uh, relationship or just a bunch of ratios really. And here this epsilon S prime is equal to CNA minus D prime over CNA times 0 0.003. And if you plug and chug some numbers here, epsilon S prime is going to be 0 0.0019, which is less than the yield strain of steel, and therefore means that assumption number one is no good. And also says that our value for the neutral axis depth is invalid. And then going a little bit more, the strain in the tensile steel, which by similar triangles would be this ratio epsilon s over d minus cna equal to epsilon cu over cna and rearranging. And then plugging and chugging is equal to 0 0.008, which is greater than epsilon y, and tells me that assumption number two is, is good. So with one invalid assumption, I've got to go back, rearrange my assumptions, and then calculate the equilibrium equation again, or at least use the same equilibrium equation, but apply different values or relationships for force. And so here, again, let me bring this down. So I'm going to try again. Because when it comes down to it, it's all about trying, right? <laughs> all right, so here, look, the, fur, the the equilibrium equation, sum of the forces, equal to 0. We had Ts minus Cs prime mi plus, minus C sub C equal to 0. And this time for our assumptions, we're going to say the first assumption, we're going to say the compression steel does not yield which means this it means that epsilon s prime is less than epsilon y and more importantly that the stress in the steel is equal to hooke's law which is means it's in the linear elastic region the modulus of elasticity es times the strain in the steel epsilon s prime and two the tensile steel does yield which again leaves us with the same assumptions epsilon s greater than epsilon y and the stress in the tensile steel is equal to fy all right so now I want to go back and substitute these assumptions into my equilibrium equation which will tell me that the tensile force is asfy minus uh, here so I would have as prime times Fs prime minus the compression force resultant which would be 0.85 times Fc prime times B times A equal to zero and I have some substitutions here in this case I would say that Fs prime is Hooke's law so ES times epsilon S prime and A is beta 1 times CNA. And if I rewrite this one more time, the other thing I want to do before I rewrite it one more time is know that in terms of CNA, epsilon S prime from similar triangles is CNA minus D prime over CNA times 0 0.003. So I'm going to substitute this relationship in as well. And now when I rewrite, I will have and what I am left with is one equation, one unknown. And I have just boxed my unknown. And just to show you what the numbers would be. And if you work this out, a quadratic equation, which you can use the quadratic formula to find out, or a solve block in MathCAD, or whatever your fancy schmancy calculator does. And what you will get is that CNA is equal to the positive result. You want to choose the positive result. 7.059 
and that's a little bit too much too many significant figures for concrete 7.06 inches and some would say even this is too many significant figures for concrete 7.06 inches and now I want to go through that process again and verify my assumptions again because that's how I roll son anyway alright so here check this out <laughs> so assumptions verify and again we do the similar triangles no problem epsilon s prime is equal to 0 0.0019 which is less than epsilon y therefore assumption one is good then I check my tensile strain in the steel and I get 0 0.008 strain which is greater than epsilon y and therefore assumption 2 is still good and now I am finally good to go